Hello and welcome to the video related to chapter 11 of the book Interaction Design Beyond Human-Computer Interaction, the fifth edition. The chapter has the name Discovering Requirements. And in this video we will talk about collecting requirements and presenting requirements. Collecting requirements. In chapter 2 we talked about the double diamond. It had four phases, discover, define, develop and deliver. The requirements part is placed on the first part of double diamond over the phases discover and define. A requirement is a statement about an intended product that specifies what is expected to do or how it will perform. The requirements represent the user's needs, wishes and values in relation to the product and it is not enough to just listen to the users. We need to read between the lines. We talked about that in a previous video. Common requirement types. We have six common requirement types. Functional requirements, data requirements, environmental requirements, user usability and user experience. Functional requirements describe what the product will do. Data requirements capture the information related to the data, for example, size, type and accuracy. Environmental requirements are related to the social, physical, organizational and technical environment the product is placed in. User is related with the characteristics of the specific user group that they are going to use the product. Usability is related to the functional and cognitive aspects the design should have in order for the product to be understood and used by the users. And user experience is related to the feelings that the use of the, this product will make the users feel. Methods to extract the requirements. In the past videos, we talked about interviews, observations and questionnaires, which can be used to extract the requirements. We can also use props, contextual inquiry and brainstorming. Props can um, help the user reflect uh, it is an artifact, it could be a card, a miniature or a part of technology that will help the user reflect and start discussing. Contextual inquiry is one-to-one -one field interviews that the designer is taken to the participants or users world by the participant him or herself. The aim is to understand how the product is placed into the participant's life. Finally, brainstorming. It is a technique uh, which involves a variety of participants and starts with warming up sessions. These warming up sessions are like icebreakers and the aim of the session is to produce as many ideas as possible. In the session is not allowed critique or judgment of the ideas. Ethics. We should remember the people oftentimes are unaware about other people observing them. We should inform them or we should ask permission from the relevant authority in case we cannot inform them one by one. And we should always follow the local guidelines. Presenting requirements. One way to present requirements are personas. Personas are fictional characters. They are based on the data, but they are not representation of the data. So don't try to create a persona from averages. A uh, persona should represent a user. Some basic characteristics that a persona has is image, name, code, short bio, what the persona likes and dislikes. In the um, description of this video, you will find some links to personas. Personas in general are widely used 
and that even if the designer doesn't uh, explicitly use personas, they use some kind of persona in their mind. The research article in the specific subject is also in the description of this video. Scenarios. Scenario is an informal narrative story, usually shows the interaction between the system and the user. There are different ways to present scenarios. The links for those different ways that are presented here are in the description of this video. User stories. A user story is used to communicate requirements between the team members. Its story represents a unit of customer visible functionality and it is a starting point to extend and clarify requirements. A user story consists of the following. A role, a wish of an action that could represent a functionality or a feature, and a benefit. Details about user stories you can find in the video, which link is placed in the description of this video. Use cases. Use cases show in detail the user interaction with the product. It includes who is using the product, what the user wants to do, the user's goals, the step the user uh, needs to do in order to do the specific task that the user wants and how the product should respond to the user's action. It doesn't include implementation of specific language, details about the user interfaces or screens. At this point, I would like to say a couple of words directed to the students of the course Human-Computer Interaction in the Department of Applied IT at the University of Gothenburg. You should remember that the design process is a messy process, but this book gives you a lot of tools to go through the different stages of the double diamond. And remember that there is no right or wrong tool. It's always your judgment and the specific situation and what you want to do that will help you pick the proper tool for you. So good luck with uh, the exams and with the next part of the course. Thank you for watching.